Welcome to Three Sisters in Wigan for round eight of the Manchester and Buxton Kart Club Championship. This is Kart Show Live. I'm just going to show you uh, an interview I did yesterday with the uh, Manchester Buxton Kart Club secretary, uh, Alan Crankshaw. We talked about all things karting. He goes back a long way. I go back to 2000. You might think that's a long time. Alan goes back a lot further than me and uh, had some very interesting things today we talk, uh, to say. We were talking about uh, MSA racing and the rise of independent kart racing in the UK and uh, where we think that might potentially lead. But uh, this is what Alan had to say. Alan, you're the club secretary here at the Manchester and Buxton Kart Club. You go back a long way. How long is that? So I've been coming to the circuit now for about 40 years. I actually started racing here oh, 36 years ago myself, um, but I came here and helped my brother when he was racing before me. And I go back to uh, year 2000 when I came here with my son. Um, so we go back uh, a decent amount of time here at the same circuit. It's, I, would, I would consider this my home club if you like. Um, lots of things have changed. Um, Back in the days when we did the Motors TV series here as an MSA event uh, at just at Three Sisters, average entries that year were 243 yeah. average. Had more than that, slightly less than that, but that was the average. I, it's quite sad for me to see the, the numbers where they are, um, but it's an indictment, I guess, of the sport as it's gone. We've got half the amount of um, MSA license holders that we had. Um, what's your view on what's going on in the sport at the moment? I think it's difficult to say what the, the real crux of the issue is. Um, I think there's a lot of different factors. I think cost is a, is a big factor. I think um, time and availability of getting to the circuit here at Three Sisters is, is a problem. Um, we don't have open testing like we used to have years ago. Um, so now we're just on a weekend only basis once a month. Uh, and that sometimes makes it difficult for people who turn up who haven't tested it doesn't really invite them to come out and, and you know come on a regular basis I think if the circuit was a, uh, more open to testing that would possibly encourage others to attend so that's, that's one factor as well as cost um, there's, there's other things as well that you know people have he, um, heavy work life um, and, and little leisure time these days because you know the, the economy is forcing them in that, in that direction um, uh, so, you know, it, it's, it's a lot of different factors that sort of have led to a reduction in numbers, unfortunately. And earlier this week, uh, on Monday, I did Kart Show Live and I was talking about the, um, the rise of independent kart race meetings and uh, versus the MSA. Um, one thing I didn't say in that show, but I think it's worth, worth mentioning, is that the difference really, I think Mark Baines said recently, you know, in five years we'll all be racing non-MSA anyway, or IKR, whatever you want to call it. Um, I would say, well, we're doing that now. The only real difference for me is that the MSA has a governing body, the MSA, which um, is responsible for all four-wheel motorsport, and that slightly puts them in conflict potentially with us in that we've got 14-year-old kids being promoted to go car racing. In the IKR at the moment, we don't have a governing body. If at some point in the future, which I think will happen, somebody, and it has to be the right person, uh, stands up and says, I'm going to create a governing body and put something together, um, how do you think that will change? And would that change karting here at Three Sisters? At the moment, it's just an MSA club. Is IKR something you're looking at? Because we've seen South Yorkshire go that way. Is that something you think that, that the club here would consider? It's a really good question. Um, and, and at the end of the day, it boils down to numbers and, and keeping the club viable. If we got to a point where IKR was going to offer us more numbers than the MSA racing, I think the club committee would have to look long and hard at that and, and make a decision. At the moment, we are just about holding our own in terms of numbers for MSA racing. We've always been affiliated to the MSA. Um, 
we like the fact that we have a governing body and that they are, you know, give us a set of guidelines to work with for scrutineering, for driving standards, etc. Um, and also, of course, it feeds the youngsters through a, a route, if you like, to other forms of motorsport, be it single-seaters, saloon cars, you know, wh whatever opportunities they want to take up after karting. So it does give them that... Um, governance if you like and, and the right guidelines to, to go through and, and use it as a stepping stone. Yeah it gives them the, the, the route into motorsport that's for sure. Would you agree that IK, I mean Andy Cox at Beryl Art took his series from an MSA, went independent, he's suffering a little bit with numbers at the moment this year but I think he's got plans for next year but it's a great little series that where you don't have to have an MSA license and we've seen people come out of that series into, for example, Super One and MSA club racing. Um, but if we were to put some sort of governing body together for IKR, um, I think part of the problem uh, is that you've got um, people who can, or might be considered divisive characters. I would class myself in that, and I certainly wouldn't do it anyway. But what sort of person do we think would it need if we were gonna go that way? I think you've, it, whoever it is, and I'm pretty sure there will be a governing body for IKR at some point in the near future, I think it would have to be somebody who has a good credibility within the sport, somebody who's been around a long time, understands the um, constraints of the sport, understands the need for some rules of whatever description they turn out to be, but there needs to be some governance for IKR at some point because otherwise it just becomes a free-for-all. I think if you look at how well F100 have adapted their series and the way that the, the people who are involved in that, running that championship have brought people into the sport and the way that they, they use the, the, the rules and regulations that they've developed, it's been a really good example of how you can run outside the MSA but you know, keep it relatively simple. So I think there's, you know, there's, there's always room for IKR there's always room for MSA, but I think IKR does, as you say, possibly need some governance and somebody who, who really, you, as a figurehead, adapts the rules and, and drives it in the right direction. And um, you, uh, this weekend, obviously you've got your team here, Cartel Motorsport. Just tell us a little bit about the drivers in your team, what sort of classes you're in. So we, we run um, cadets, juniors and seniors um, here at Three Sisters. Um, Mainly in the juniors and the seniors, we run the Rotax. Um, the X30 hasn't really taken off at Three Sisters, and I think that's just down to, you know, the fact that uh, cost is a, is, a, is a factor. Rotax is uh, an engine where you can run it relatively, you know, uh, the longevity of it is pretty good. X30 is a much more um, demanding in terms of rebuilds and, and re maintenance on the engines. The club club racers here just basically want to come, race, take it home and, and come again the next month to, to race. So the, the running costs are relatively lower. Um, we're doing pretty well at the moment. We lead the club championships here at, at Three Sisters with uh, young Tom Gini. Uh, we've also got Thomas Walker who comes and races with us from the Isle of Man every month. And he's well up in the championship. He's also doing Super 1 with us this year as is Tom Gini. And we've got another driver, Ethan Jones, who... Um, did really well in the winter series at the start of the year. He's had a little um, bit of uh, bad luck middle of the season, but he's coming on strong again at the, the sort of the back end of the year. So we're hoping he's going to be in the top five or six at the end of the season. So yeah, been, been a good year up to now, and long may it continue. Okay, well good luck this weekend. Thank you very much. Good to see you. Well, guys, we are live here at Three Sisters. We're here for the first race today. It's KZ UK. Let's go through the grid positions with you. Stephen Horton will be going off pole from Fraser Rose. And then uh, Chris Whitehead off P3. Off P4, it's uh, Nick Carr. P5, Paul Edwards. David Pears goes off P6. Just six in it. But this is uh, pretty much the gearbox, or if you're watching in the United States, the shifter... Uh, class uh, shifter carts these are called and uh, this should be uh, pretty awesome so uh, they're just on the formation laps at the moment looks like they're getting another formation lap in before we uh, go for a standing start so uh, 
we're using the valley circuit today. That is the valley as they come up over the, uh, the valley, over the dip, uh, down off the dip. This is Joey Dunlop corner, the right-hander. They go down the uh, dummy grid straight into Paddock Bend. Uh, the uh, 29 car you can see at the front there, he will be going off pole. That is Stephen Horton. Stephen, uh, third in the championship on drop scores, that is. Chris Whitehead, who goes off P3 right behind him. He is uh, fourth in the championship on drop scores, but without drop scores, Whitehead leads by five points. But it's close either way, not least because the top two in the championship, Dan Kelly, British Open champion, and Johnny Buchanan, who should be driving the 35 car, neither of them here this weekend. So the carts come round. They'll be lining up uh, on the grid hatchings. The starter getting them all ready. Six in it. These carts extremely quick. If you've never, if you've only ever driven corporate carts, for example, uh, even if you've driven something like a Rotax Maxim, you've never driven a 125 shifter or gearbox cart, as we call them here in the UK. You don't know what you're missing. The revs rise. Here we go. We're looking for Horton to get the best start. He's been the man on fire this weekend. 12 alongside his Fraser Rose. Who's going to get the best of it? Looks like Horton's got a great start. Horton has got a great start. Fraser, Fraser Rose dips into uh, second place just in behind. And that looks like uh, Nick Carr. Is that Nick Carr come through for third? Let's have a look. Yeah, it is Nick Carr coming off the valley on the 11 cart there in third place. But the pole man, Stephen Horton has had a great start but he's under pressure already from Fraser Rose as they come uh, through the double apex now down onto Rogerson's into the left hander and now it'll go right now as they come out of the right hander here in Luna Bend right at this point of the track with 315 meters away from being pretty much flat on the throttle all the way up to turn one and it looks like Horton definitely Pulled uh, a cart length or two. Go left-handed again over the valley. One lap gone. That looks like uh, the 11 cart Nick Carr. Then Chris Whitehead, the 55 cart. He's fourth in the championship currently uh, on drop scores. Although without the drop score, he's actually slightly ahead of Horton. So this is an important battle between Horton and Whitehead. Horton leading the race. Wants as many carts between himself and Chris Whitehead as he can get. And at the moment, he's got a couple of them. And that could be valuable when the uh, championship standings are decided at the end of the year. The drivers in club racing, of course, in the UK. I'm not sure how you guys do it abroad. Let me know in the comments. But uh, we can drop here in the club meeting here at Manchester and Buxton Kart Club. They dropped the worst two scores in the season. It effectively means you can go off to maybe a British Championship, something like that, and still not miss out on your, your club uh, championship standings uh, at all. But, uh, yeah, we are just uh, three laps into this one or so, something like that, ten laps to go, two laps uh, completed. This will be the uh, the third completed lap. These, laps of, uh, these races today, by the way, guys, are 12 laps long. So uh, not, a ti not timed races but 12 laps long, and it is Horton that leads, still leads it from Fraser Rose. 0.29 is the gap. Back to Nick Carr, it was 2.3, it's now 3.4, so these guys out front are uh, pulling around about a second a lap on Carr, but he was just eight hundredths, I said, uh, ahead of uh, Chris Whitehead as they went through the line that time. Paul Edwards is there in uh, fifth place on the 50 car, it's the 32 car of David Piers, who is... Uh, in sixth place currently. Purple Sector being put in by Stephen Horton, who's put in the fastest lap, 41.86, but that compares to Fraser Rose at 41.88, so really nothing between them at the moment. You're looking at the 55 cart there, Chris Whitehead, fourth in the championship is Chris. He's come out onto the uh, start straight, pretty long straight, 185 metres. I was looking at the straight at uh, South Yorkshire Park Club at Woodwell recently. I, I, it's a fairly short circuit, that. But actually, on Google Maps, that's 230 metres, uh, the uh, straight at Woodwell, which is longer than the actual straight part of the straight here at Three Sisters. Everybody thinks this is the one of the biggest circuits with the longest straights in UK karting. Um, but uh, certainly, as you come through the right-hander here, coming through Luna Bend, as Horton does now, uh, with uh, eight laps, it'll be seven laps to go, I think, as they go through the line this time. 
halfway through the line now. Yes, seven to go as they go through the line. Horton still got it, but not by much. He's not uh, he's not shedding Fraser Rose very quickly, is he? I think we've got. I just looked away there, and I think is that Fraser Rose? Oh, it's 55. Chris Whitehead. Oh, he's he's got a mechanic. Looks like a mechanical breakdown on the straight for Whitehead. Now that actually is very rare. We don't often see that in these carts, but that looks like some sort of mechanical issue. It may not necessarily be the engine, of course. It could be a throttle cable, anything like that. But Chris Whitehead, now fourth in the championship is Whitehead. We're getting the uh, wave yellow, so there's no overtaking down the straight. And this is the best opportunity to do overtake down the straight. Cart's just being pulled away, so uh, that yellow flag should be pulled in. But Chris Whitehead, who really is battling with the race leader here, Horton, for the championship lead. Uh, first and second in the championship, Kelly and Buchanan not here this weekend. So it looks like Horton could be in the box seat after this weekend. I'll say that, it could be. He will be in the box seat this weekend, Stephen Horton. Now, Chris Whitehead, that is a disaster uh, there. He's going to end up down the back of the field. So uh, only six in it, of course, but he'll, sc he'll still score six place points. You still score points if you... Uh, don't finish in karting. The mini bikes championship we do, they don't score anything until outside the top 16. And actually, that dynamic I quite like. Uh, but uh, here today, top six, even if you DNF, um, you will score points. As I say before, on the mini bikes championship, they don't score any points if they DNF. And that really has a dramatic effect. Uh, on the championship, that's the 32. David Pierce about to get overtaken. Whoa, one goes one way, the other looking the other side. Fraser Rose looked the other side, but uh, thought better of it because he was going to end up with at least two wheels, probably four, on the grass, and that's allowed Horton to get away. And he goes through the line this time. Eight of the 12 laps have gone. Fastest lap is for uh, Stephen Horton, 41.86. The gap, 0.66, as he went through the line that time. It's still Nick Carr now in third place. Paul Edwards, of course, up to fourth. Piers in fifth with Whitehead out of the race. And uh, as I said before, guys, that's a bit of a disaster for uh, Chris Whitehead. Looks like Stephen Horton may have enough here. Don't forget, guys, to uh, follow us on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash TDI Media UK. And if you're enjoying the coverage here, the uh, first real live stream that uh, we've done in anger as such. We did one, uh, a very successful one at uh, Hooton Park uh, a couple of months ago now. And uh, about 9,000 people watched that uh, in the uh, week after the event was completed. 930 watched on the day, to be fair. So don't forget to subscribe, like and share. And uh, uh, let me just say to all of you who have subscribed to the channel so far, 60,800 and change of you, uh, thank you very much for your support. It's been uh, quite remarkable, uh, the support that we've been having. Now, don't forget, guys, if you want to tweet us, tweet us your questions, comments and messages as Horton goes through with two to go. He looks like he's got this one tied up. I hope I'm not giving him the commentator's curse. Uh, Fraser Rose there in second, just doesn't, doesn't seem to have any answer. Uh, Stephen Horton's car obviously coming on better towards the end of the race than uh, Fraser Rose, just can't close him down. Tweet us your questions, comments and messages. Keep them to 140 characters uh, if you can, and uh, we'll show them on screen. We've got a few, I think, that we can uh, bring to you. Right now, Brian Baddy said uh, TDI Media Live, the track looks stunning. Looking forward to the race. Well, this is the first race as Horton gets the last lap board to go through now. Uh, Fraser Rose now 1.29 behind. He was right up Stephen Horton's chuff earlier on, but he's not any longer. Horton's got this one down off the valley for the last time under control. Uh, Nick Carr there still in third from Edwards and Piers. Chris White has said out of the race. Gary Obscure says, uh, nice work on the Twitter feed. You plan on doing that again? Um, I'm not sure whether you mean live streaming, Gary, or actually the Twitter feed, but the Twitter feed is part of the software, uh, obviously. But as we come into the final few turns of the first race we're covering today, the KZ UK final, last lap, it is Stephen Horton who will go out of here with the championship lead. 
from Fraser Rose in second place. We're looking uh, a lot further back to Paul Edwards on the 50 car. It was 21 seconds behind at the end of the uh, penultimate lap. And we're still waiting for them to come. Such was Stephen Horton's and uh, Fraser Rose's dominance. And uh, there is, uh, oh, look at this for a battle. All three of them go through, one after the other. It was uh, Edwards who came back on that last lap. And uh, he's uh, just, just picked Nick Carr for fourth place. And in fifth, it is uh, David Piers.